All right. So the message is called, Even So, I Send You. Even So, I Send You. Now, how many of you ever felt in your life that you may have let God down? Is there anyone here that's ever felt at some point in your life you let God down? I'm sure everyone at some point felt that. And there's other points in our lives where we feel that God has let us down. Many times we want something, we pray to God and we ask God for that specific thing and we don't seem to get that answer. And we feel like God is letting us down. There's other times where there's conflicts that we go through and within those conflicts of our lives it brings so much confusion within our mind, within everything around us that we kind of question, what's going on God? Who are you? Why is this happening to me? You say you're good, you say all these different things, you say you can perform all these miracles, but look at everything that's bad going on around me. What's going on? And we question God. And we have situations in life, within all these situations, it tends to cause us sometimes to give up on God. Sometimes with all these situations going on, where we question God, we feel let down by God, we feel like we've let, down, let God down, we tend to turn our backs on God. And today, I want to tell you guys a story of someone who's felt a similar situation to what each one of us feel today. It's about a story of a person that's a little older, someone from the past. And it's about a guy who was traveling down a road. He was traveling down a road to find answers. And this road that he was traveling, it's the road called Life. And throughout his life, he was traveling through all the different situations, all the obstacles that came along, everything that he was going through. He was traveling along this road of life. And he was always trying to find the answers to what was going on with his life. And today I want us to begin our study in Acts chapter 9, found in verse 3 and 5, to find out what, this, what he was trying to discover. All right? Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 5 begins by saying, The high priest gave Saul the letter of authorization he requested and immediately Saul headed for Damascus. After days of travel, he and his companions were near, nearing the city when suddenly a brilliant light from heaven flashed around Saul. He stumbled and fell blindly to the ground. Then he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Trembling, Saul said, Who are you, Lord? The voice answered, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. You have been fighting against the pricks of your own conscience ever since you consented to Stephen's death. There's three things I want us to catch in this verse. The first one is that this man Saul, this is who we're going to be studying today, Saul. All right, He was traveling a road, a road that was leading towards Damascus. That road he was traveling was a road filled with confusion within his own mind. It was filled with misunderstanding and he felt lost as he was traveling that road. The verses might not say it right now, but we're going to understand why I'm saying these things. We're going to read a few verses. It might take a little while, but we're going to get to a certain point, so bear with me. The next thing is, as he was traveling that road, there was a specific reason he was traveling it. And it was to find answers. We might not see it right now. We know the story of Saul, why he was going to Damascus. But there's also another reason that many of us may not have caught the first time we've read the story of Saul. And the, the second reason is that he was going through that road to find answers. All right. Now for us to understand what those answers were that he was looking for, we've got to backtrack his life. I want to take us a few steps back in history to find out what he was doing, what led him to that point, what caused him to go on that road towards Damascus. And in order to do that, I want us to go to Acts chapter 7. You kind of just have to flip back one page, for those of you who are following along. Acts chapter 7, verse 54 to 60. Acts chapter 7, verse 54 to 60, it says, When the council members heard this, they were beside themselves with anger. Their pride was so hurt that they actually ground, grinded their teeth in a fit of rage. 
But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked upon, looked up to heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing by his right hand. Then he said, Look, I can see into heaven, and I see Jesus, the Son of Man, standing at the right hand of God. When the council members heard that, they shouted, Stop him! and put their fingers in their ears to keep from hearing what to them was blasphemy and rushed toward him like madmen. They grabbed him, pushing him out of the courtroom and through the streets of Jerusalem un until they were outside the city. They took off their coats and asked a young man named Saul to watch them. As they were stoning Stephen, he put his hands over his head and cried out, Lord Jesus, I give myself to you. Receive my spirit. As he sank to his knees, he cried again, Lord Jesus, please don't hold this against them. Then he stumbled to the floor and he died. We all know this story. Well, if you don't, now you do. But there's a few things I want us to catch within this story that sometimes we don't catch. The first one is that Stephen, he was an uneducated man. He wasn't, he didn't do theology, he, he wasn't educated in the Bible, but he understood the Bible, he knew the Bible, and that was because God was teaching him the Bible, because he accepted Jesus into his life, he allowed the Holy Spirit to come into him, and God gave him the education that he needed, but according to everyone around him, he wasn't an educated man. And we know that before he was stoned, the reason he was stoned was because he was speaking to the educated people of the Bible, the Pharisees. And they disagreed with him. And they chose to stone him. Many of us are like Stephen sometimes. We tend not to be the biggest people within church, let's say. Many of us aren't the pastor. Many of us aren't the president of the conference. Many of us aren't ever going to be that. But we can be used by God. God can teach us many things. God can give us wisdom and understanding of many things. The next thing I want us to catch is that Saul was there witnessing what was going on. Saul was there watching the men stone Stephen. Saul was there watching everything that was happening. Now, I want us to go even further than this story. Go further back to a time just before the, the day of the anointing of the Holy Spirit when they were all in the upper room. Around that time, just after that time, there was an incident where the Bible says that Peter was walking down the streets of Jerusalem one day with other disciples. And as he was walking, his shadow was passing by many sick people on the streets. As his shadow was passing by, once the shadow reached the people, they would immediately be healed. Now imagine someone so filled with the Holy Spirit that just their shadow can change someone's life. Just his shadow was able to make an impact on someone's life. Just his shadow was able to transform the person's life. Whatever was going wrong with them no longer existed. And it was all because he had the Holy Spirit within him. Now what happened going further on is that the Pharisees knew this and they didn't like it so they put him in jail and after they put him in jail God knew the plan that he had for Peter but God also knew that he had a plan for someone else so God allowed Peter to go into jail but it didn't end there at night God called an angel to go down and open the jail to remove Peter out of the jail and the angel told him in the morning go straight to the temple and preach once again the, the, the very thing that the Pharisees were telling him not to do, he went out and he did it. I want us to read Acts chapter 5 now to continue on in this story. To find out what we need to learn about Peter and what it has to do with this man Saul that we want to be studying. Acts chapter 5 verse 33 to 39. And we're going to find out how any of this has anything to do with Saul. All right. It says, Acts 5, verse 33 to 39. These words were like a knife, cutting deep into the hearts of the council members, 
So they decided that all the apostles should be ex executed. Then one of the council members, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was highly respected as a teacher, stood up and asked the apostles to be taken outside. He addressed the council saying, Men of Israel, be careful what you do to these men. Remember that before Jesus of Nazareth came along a man called Thaddeus, claiming to be the deliverer. He had about 400 men ready to fight and free Israel, but he was killed. His followers were soon scattered and nothing came of it. After him came Judas, a Galilean, who started a movement during the last Roman census. He and his zealot also drew crowds of people, but he was killed and his fellow followers dispersed. So, in this case, don't take any action against these men. It will only draw attention to their cause. Just leave them alone. Because if they started this thing on their own, it will fail just as the others did. But if their movement was started by God, you can't stop it no matter what you do. You might even find yourself fighting against God himself. Now I want to ask you guys, what does this have to do with Saul? Because we want to understand Saul. We want to know what the story of Saul is. And I'm here to tell you today that this has a lot to do with Saul. Because Saul was in this incident. Saul was present at this time. Now how do I know that if these verses never mention Saul? I know this because when you study the Bible, the Bible will give you clear answers. And we find the answer to this question in Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22 verse 3 gives us the answer to that. Acts chapter 22 verse 3 says, and it's Paul speaking who was earlier known as Saul. It says this, I am a fellow Jew, born in Tarsus of Sicilia, in Asia Minor. I was educated right here in Jerusalem under the great teacher Gamaliel. He taught me all about our ancestors and the importance of the law of Moses. I was very zealous for the honor of God, just as you, are, you all are today. So we know that this high priest that was in the time of Peter that address all the other members to watch out don't judge the don't judge Peter be careful this man was the teacher of Saul okay so because he was the teacher of Saul this indicates that Saul was present during those times when people were to be judged by the Pharisees and all those things how do I know this because Gamaliel was one of the highest end people. He was like the pastor, like one of the conference leaders. He was at the top, okay? So, for instance, when Jesus was to be condemned and with all those Pharisees, Gamaliel was one of those present in the courtroom to give the judgment on Jesus. Now, what happened in those times was that it wasn't just the high people that were there present giving the judgment. There was the students who would sit directly behind their teacher in order to watch how their teacher would react to the people and watch what the people would react, how to, how to know how to take the lead. So when their turn comes, they know what to do. So Saul was always behind this high priest Gamaliel to learn from him to understand how to be that high priest when it comes his turn. Now, there's something important to know about this high priest Gamaliel, because he wasn't like all the other ones. He wasn't like all the other ones. He was very different. How do we know he was different? Because he stood up in front of everyone and said, listen, you guys got to stop with what you're doing. You got to slow down, think about it, and don't just react. Everyone else was ready to attack, 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 but he was opposite. He was an open-minded person. He was willing to take into consideration the accounts of the others, listen to what they have to say, hear what they have to say, and think about it. He wasn't the ordinary high priest. 